Welcome everyone <laughs> to the April 24th, 2019 Neshoba Regional School Committee meeting. This is a regular meeting, calling the meeting to order at 6 o'clock. Um, we, our first order um, on the agenda is um, citizens' comments. Before I ask if there are citizens' comments, because I believe there are. Are there? Yes. Okay. Um, just bear with me while I read through the policies. We do this all the time <laughs> when we have folks in the room. Um, so we've got two policies that govern our citizens' comments, and just for um, everyone's information, if they want to look it up on the website, they can. There are policy KE and policy BEDH. Um, we're going to ask that you keep your comments limited to items on the agenda. Um, in, in a kind of a funky way, some of these items we haven't discussed yet, so um, just bear in mind that we don't even know some of the details that are in the agenda items. Um, would ask to try to keep it to three minutes. It's not a discussion with the school committee. We want to hear what your input is. Um, and then I think you're from, Min are you from Minuteman? I'm a, I'm a town resident, but I also am um, Bolton's Minuteman rep. Are you Dave? I am. All right, so then you know that, you know, disparaging comments, we can't, we have to keep it all above board. If Absolutely. You all right, um, so how many citizens' comments do we have? One, two? That's it? All right, so please um, give us your comment. What I'd ask is that you give us your name and the town that you're from. Sure, I'm Dave O'Connor, I'm from Bolton. I'm also uh, Bolton's Minuteman rep. And uh, one of the things that we saw on the uh, agenda for tonight is Minuteman Middle School um, uh, positions. Mm -hmm. um, one of my concerns is that there's no detail or context to that. Um, there was an email exchange from superintendent to uh, Dr. Berquillen, who is the superintendent, um, which seemed to indicate, based on a conversation that I had, um, that there was a, going to be a recommendation for um, a, an ending of the um, uh, Minuteman okay. yeah, minute um, Middle School Program um, Agreement. Um, that brings up a lot of questions. Um, there seemed to be another indication that there would be a, uh, a, a, a some type of a, a formal request that would be following up um, in a few days, which leads me to believe that there's a request for a vote for the committee. Um, again, the agenda does not speak to that, so I would ask the committee before a, a vote is actually taken that you invite um, members of Minuteman um, the Minuteman reps uh, um, to present uh, what has been going on and we'd also like to see um, what are the alternatives that are being um, proposed. Our concern is, is that this is a beloved program. Um, it's fu fully funded right now through Minuteman and so there's, there's no understanding from a citizen's perspective of why this would be a concern. And so I ask you to consider that and maybe table the vote uh, to another meeting um, to allow you guys to get more information. And um, thank you for your time. All right, thank you. Appreciate your comments. So <coughs> regarding that vote, um, the school committee hasn't even heard what this is. And as you know, um, the agenda is to discuss the topic. So once we have an opportunity to hear from the superintendent, if you're asking for a vote tonight, then we'll listen to what you have to say and mm -hmm. decide from there. So thank you. Hi. Hi, your I'm name Tammy is O'Connor. I live in Bolton. You're Debbie O'Connor. Tammy. Tammy, are you related to Debbie. Mr. Dave O'Connor? I am associated okay. with But I grew up in town, so okay. I have like deeper roots to the <laughs> <laughs> school. Okay. So, other than Dave. But anyway, um, so my concern, as Dave articulated as well, is what is the overall. Um, intention or problem to be solved again it's not clear and the tech ed program I know my kids have been through uh, Emerson Sawyer the whole routine I know there's plenty of other parents that are here at the table probably whose kids have partook in the uh, tech ed program so while it's not clear what it is I would say that there are many kids and families that really um, support that program so if there were to be a call to action that I am in 
sync with what David proposed that you know more information goes out to the community before anything <coughs> decisive is is agreed upon. Yeah, I, I think we need to hear what the administration has to say because I, I, we don't have the knowledge yet. We're Understand. All learn. Um, but also, what, what, what it sounds like I'm hearing from you is that this program is going away, and I would find that really hard to believe. So let's all listen. It's when we just get not clear if, it, if, if agreements were to be changed and whatnot. What is, is, is right. it still well, going to stay in place? And I understand it yeah. needs to be talked to, but and I'm just I saying we'll all find it out. raises a lot of questions that I know, Lorraine, you've been around here a long time, that it would be probably a, a conversation that wouldn't just be a quick vote that people well, had a better understanding. In other words, there would be a better understanding if it is something that is being proposed to be going So away. let's hear what it is. Yep. Thank you. Okay, I appreciate thanks. both of you um, standing up and sharing your, your input. Are there any other comments? No? Well, then let's move on to student presentations in the Hale Middle School. I'm just going to, they're right out here. Go get, right them, go get them. Go get them. You three can sit right here. Um, hello. Hello. Hi, how are you? Oh my goodness, fine. How are you? I'm great. Oh, good. Good, good. good. Uh, these are members of our GSA. This is Mr. Mike Turpin. This is Mrs. Karen Boyver. They are both our co-advisors um, who have uh, performed a wonderful <laughs> presentation with our students for you. So I'm going to turn it over to the two of them to do introductions. And, and Landon, you want to drive? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. 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 Um, and so we're going to share with you a little bit generally about what a GSA is and the kids are going to share a little bit about some specific things that they've done and what it means to them that we have a, a Gay Straight Alliance at our school. Um, so the Hale GSA is like other GSAs across the country. A GSA is in general a club where students can have fun and socialize, where they can learn about the LGBTQ community, um, and about gender identity and also have the opportunity to teach others about those things. Uh, it's a club whose mission is to promote diversity and inclusion in the school community, to uh, tackle some stereotypes that might be out there among other middle school kids, uh, break those down a little bit. Sometimes we discuss issues that are going on at the national or state level that have to do with equality. Um, and it's also an opportunity for students to become leaders and role models in the school community. Okay. Uh, as far as what we do, the GSA really serves kind of a two-pronged purpose where we address social and emotional needs of students and adults sometimes in the building, as well as educational and representational needs as well. Um, one of the things that I found interesting when I was doing some research on GSAs a while back is that even for students who don't uh, consider them part, themselves part of the GSA, simply knowing that we're in the building makes a difference. It, they say that it makes the, their, them feel more comfortable and it makes their school a more welcoming place. Um, so I think it even speaks to the idea that even if you're not part of the GSA, knowing the GSA is there for you if you need it um, really makes students feel a little bit safer in the building. Uh, so as far as those social emotional needs go, we meet and we uh, interact with one another to find fellow people who share that interest in promoting equality. Uh, sometimes you know you wonder who else believes the things that I believe who else feels this way and we find like-minded people and this allows that to cross over uh, grade level barriers and maybe you talk to people that you wouldn't normally see even during the course of your day we discuss LGBTQ plus issues that uh, our students in the club or other students outside of it may be encountering at Hale and we meet weekly as well as have some other kind of special events that we hold as well 
Uh, as far as our educational representational needs are concerned, uh, we help students both within the club and in the greater Hill populace to understand important and relevant issues related to the LGBTQ plus community. Uh, for example, we have a bulletin board up right now that, that showcases um, couples, both uh, same-sex couples and opposite-sex couples, and it's under the heading of Love is Love, which really helps students to kind of see themselves maybe within that billboard, uh, bulletin board, excuse me, as well as to kind of see uh, maybe representations that they don't see as often and realize that, you know, we're a lot more similar than um, maybe they've been led to believe in the past. Uh, we also consider ourselves a great source of giving reliable information in a school and age appropriate manner. Um, sometimes students are concerned about um, you know, misusing terminology. Sometimes students use words without necessarily thinking fully about what they mean. Um, sometimes they're just confused about you know, what a proper term to uh, address a certain idea. You know, what's the difference between say gender expression or gender identity versus um, sexual orientation. We help kind of address some of those things through uh, educational efforts that uh, the GSA spearheads. Okay, um, so one of the main ways that we achieve that educational goal is through our cafeteria bulletin board, which Isabel is going to tell us about a little bit. <laughs> Well, in GSA, one of the main activities that we do is make bulletin boards in the cafeteria for other students to look at. And our bulletin boards are about topics that we think the school should see. And as a group, we get to decide what goes on our bulletin boards and how we want it to be presented. Since the boards are up in the cafeteria, the other students see and talk about them. Here are some examples of the boards that we've made. and. As you can see, there, there, we haven't had a board as long as I've been here that didn't have a rainbow on it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Isabel. Well. Okay. And then um, Landon is going to tell us a little bit about one of our big yearly initiatives. So every year we have a planned kindness week. It is a week where we focus on being more kind, even though we are already kind, and we focus on trying to be kind to other people that we might not focus on as much, people that we don't talk to. We open up to new ideas and new friendships. Every morning over the loudspeakers, we play fun music to just make people happy in the morning and that in that friendly, kind mood. Um, we have an advisory class where kids write kind letters to everybody in their advisory, and it's left on their locker. So when you see it on the locker, it just describes what people like about you. And people can send each other kind mail through mailboxes around the school. And you can just send notes to your friends, people who you haven't, you have something nice to say, but you've never got the chance to. And it really helps to make some kids' days. Thank you so much. So we have some examples of what the kind mail looks like. So this year, um, we collected and re-delivered over a thousand kind mail postcards over the four days, I think, that yes. we were doing that. We, and Mr. Grady this year got us actual metal mailboxes. So we have one <laughs> for each grade level. And every time I walked by one and opened it up, it was jam-packed with these things. It was amazing. <coughs> um, and we would sort through them and then deliver them. And the next day, when the kids would receive these messages in home room. And we explained to the students, you don't have to sign them. They can be anonymous. We're going to quickly look them over and make sure they're all good. But um, so that that allowed kids to maybe send a kind message to someone that they didn't necessarily don't usually talk to. So here's a couple of examples. There's a sweet one to our sixth grade math teacher. Thank you for helping me. There's um, there's a, a cute one about uh, to a friend about like how they like texting each other. You're very trustworthy. Oh, that was really sweet. Um, you're cool, you're funny, you're brave. You like Harry Potter, you are Sophia. So some of them are silly, some of them are really sweet. Um, the end of the week, the advisory that Landon referred to, the students all had a, received a cutout of a leaf and they could write a sentence uh, that started with, kindness has the power to, or kindness is. Um, and we took those leaves and we created this kindness tree as a culminating product. So there's about 300 leaves on there that all have a student comment about kindness um, and some other decorations. And that's now cheering up our hallway. <laughs> okay, 
Um, and then sometimes we just want to have fun. So Sebastian's going to tell us about the having fun portion of our club. So um, it's not only just about like educating and stuff. It's also just about like just having um, just like a good time in GSA. So. There's an activity called Crafternoon where we just do a bunch of crafts and in the afternoon. In the afternoon, <laughs> and, um, just like in, uh, express ourselves through art. And Spirit Day is another thing that we do where, um, like, the most recent one was like where we, um, in June last year we wore a rainbow to just because rainbow is awesome and then. <laughs> parties um, are at the very end of the year and with music and just um, meeting new people and then just um, at some meetings we just like hang out and talk and just yeah just have a place to be yeah yeah very good um, so we reached out to some of our former USA members who are now high school students for some thoughts about <coughs> what USA means to them they pretty wordy with a few up here to share with you. Um, in the, the first one in the purple, I really like that it talks about how it makes the environment at Hale feel safe and comfortable for kids. And in the, in the, in the yellow one, the student is really expressing that even though the student wasn't able to come to us frequently, that the, the times that the student did come felt very, very safe um, and accepted and that the student really needed that. Um, we have a couple of other students. Do you want to go to the next one? Um, you know, for some kids, they're talking about this group helping them to understand who they are, to accept who they are, to educate others. Um, and and uh, you know, our, another another person talked about both the acceptance part, the love part, the inclusion part, but also the spreading awareness outward. Um, Isabel, what does the, the GS having a GSA at Hale mean for you? Well, I think that GSA is important because it's just, it, it's a nice place to hang out, even with people who aren't in the GSA, because they just, even if they just came to hang out, it's just really fun. How about you, Linda? Um, I, GSA is important to me because I learn so much from GSA. I can feel comfortable to ask questions without feeling, like, shamed for it or anything. I can just feel free to ask questions and get educated by people who understand it better than I do. And I spread that education to people who aren't in the GSA and need to know that education. And I just love having crafts and we always brainstorm together and it's so fun hearing everyone's ideas. And we just always talk about things, sometimes not even GSA related, it's just a great place to be accepted by the kids. And even if you're don't understand some people, we all just like fit in together and hang out and do whatever. Thank you. And Sebastian, would you like to add anything to that? Like, um, I started going to GSA this year and I've met some really cool people that I don't think I would have become friends with if I didn't go to GSA. And I just, it's, it's like super flexible, so it's not super set up. And so it just makes you feel like more like, welcomed I guess at school and just makes me look forward to Friday afternoon because <laughs> there's ESA. We all do. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, thank you so much for having us. Thank you thank so you much, guys. Nice. That's thank awesome. You. Really appreciate it. questions for our school committee members, so if you just sit, sit back down just oh, in case you don't anybody get to has Yeah, I was just going to yeah. say the same thing. I think you did a really, really good job, and I, I love the, I love the emphasis on the kindness, and um, I love how you presented tonight. You did really, really well, each one of you, and I really appreciate hearing that it's so much fun too. That's so cool. So thank you so much for doing such a great job. And school committee, if there's no other questions, then no, nice no, job. No, good. Thank, thank, thank you. Great job. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you, the parents. Thank you, staff. We appreciate bringing them. Thank you so much. Can you guys, can we just go up by the TV for a second? Dr. McGuire was going to take a picture. Dr. McGuire, did you? Congratulations. Thank you, yes. Dr. McGuire. Wonderful. Let me see. 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 Let me see
Thanks, Alita. I didn't bring the camera in. Sorry. I don't want to see it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Alrighty, that was awesome. Thank you very much. Thank you. Right. Now I can get food. Our next item is staff recognition of our athletic director. Um, if um, Principal Dean Domenico would love to come up to the table and um, our athletic director, Ms. Ms. And the kids call you Mrs. Rich now, which is really yeah, weird. I know. But it works. <laughs> Ready to be embarrassed a little yep, bit? Yep, All right. Yay! <laughs> Your seat is really <laughs> Take the one <laughs> I've had the good fortune of working with uh, several talented athletic directors and Mrs. Tanya Rich. Ms. Tanya Rich? Or <laughs> whatever. <laughs> and Tanya is at the top of the list. She's like Prince, really. It's just the, it's just the one. She's like Prince. <laughs> her instincts and intelligence are first rate, and she uses them for the common good. In her actions and words, she shows that people matter, leadership matters, and that we, as leaders, can change our community for the better. The success of our athletic program over the past 10 years can be attributed in large part to Tanya. Whether hiring the right coach or working with student athletes to better understand the nature of teamwork, she has benefited the Neshoba community in a myriad of ways. She serves as a mentor to our coaches and fosters the idea that the most important part of coaching often doesn't involve the score of a game. She has built an athletic culture built on hard work, dedication, and respect for all who make it possible. We are routinely recognized for our sportsmanship and other coaches have complimented the school on the character of its programs. She has been a guiding force on both our school safety committee and our substance abuse task force. This year, she co-coordinated safety training for hundreds of district staff members and 1,000 high school students. Also, she was instrumental in bringing Dr. Ruth Prote to the district to speak about the teenage brain and addiction. She has led workshops and coordinated conferences at both the state and national level. This work has significantly raised the profile of Neshoba Regional High School. The NIAAA promotes the use of educational-based athletics as a means for teenagers to develop into young adults who will make a positive difference in their communities. I can't think of an individual who embodies these values more than our own Tanya Rich. So the, this was a major award that Tanya just recently won. And just describe what the, it's a national award, mm -hmm. and just describe the, the I'm sorry, I, I jumped the gun um, <laughs> a little bit, but uh, the NIAA is the, uh, the National Association for Athletic Administrators. Um, and uh, they reached out to me uh, because, I can't tell you, I go to so many games across the state, and someone inevitably pulls me aside and say, says, do you know how lucky you are? You got the best <laughs> athletic director in the state. And clearly, her reputation has, has spread uh, on a national level. And um, uh, they see what we see. Uh, they see someone who, who's, whose every effort is, is to, uh, to promote the community and, uh, and our student athletes. And I think it was the same time, this, this is, in my three years, this is now your third award that you've won in, in my three years. It has nothing to do with me, of course, but I'm just saying, wow, that's a lot of awards to win. <laughs> that was a good so, caveat. <laughs> I not even picked that one up. <laughs> But for, for three years, I mean, and this is the first national award. I mean, I could not be prouder of you as a superintendent of the school district. And I'm very much like Paul. I also get phone calls off from people saying, would you like to share your No, we have no intention of sharing our athletic director. Lots of people would like us to share you with them, um, but you're all ours and we are so grateful. Your dedication to our district, your loyalty, I know we tease you that you bleed green because we I think some of us really believe that you do. We are so appreciative of everything that you bring to our district and to our children. We thank you so much. And we are so proud tonight to say congratulations. Yeah, thank I don't you. know if anyone else at the table has a child in the high school right now. I know you had one that was an athlete. Mm -hmm. Athlete? Athletics. Yeah. But I have three kids. They were all um, athletes and my youngest is the only one left. And he is a ridiculous 
ridiculously involved. So I've always got those kids around. And I think the thing that like you talked to, both talked about, you know, the coaching staff and talked about, you know, how you feel as administrators. But I will say that the kids don't see, they see Tanya as someone to respect. They look up to you. They, they see you as a trusted um, adult in their lives. And that is huge. So just as a parent, um, hearing kids talk about you when you're not around, it's all good. That's one thing. But the other thing is, I think you need to understand the impact that you have on their lives and how valuable you are to them. And for us, like, we could never ask for anything more. And thank you so much for just make sure you pay your well. <laughs> <laughs> so we have a small gift to give you, Tanya. We thank you so much for coming tonight. And congratulations. Thank it's a big so deal. Much. Thank you. school committee chair updates um, next meeting we ever thank you all thank you for leading the training on the superintendent evaluation although I wasn't there but I've been through it before yes so you'll respect the fact that I wasn't there um, but thank you all for getting your evaluations in um, there was so much consistency um, and we will be sharing that with you it's all good next <laughs> next um, meeting um, the other thing is just for the school committee um, we're going to be meeting later on tonight to review several executive session minutes, um, but we're doing that so we can clean it all up so that you start with your newly constituted board with a clean slate and move it forward. We've got a couple that, this one and the last one that we've got to, we've got to chase those down, but we'll try to get that all done for the next meeting so that you can um, start fresh, okay? Uh, other than that, we do not have a student representative report tonight. Um, but we do have a superintendent's report. Well, and mine's really going to be a, a, a little bit different this time because it's not a regular stu uh, a regular superintendent's report. Um, because, of course, we had our break. It was only two days in the week, so there's not a lot that's been going on. Although we, we did talk about it. We probably have things to bring forward, but we decided we would just wait until next week or next meeting. However, with that said, um, I, I do have a small presentation, too. Um, Todd has just finished off his doctoral program. We are so proud of you. We are so proud of you. It was, it's a lot of work, and I mean, I live with somebody who just finished it, and I, I know what it's like and the amount of time that you put in and the dedication, and we're just really, really proud of you. We want to congratulate you. So we also have a small gift for you, too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's lovely. Well, well, thank you very much. As you know, Todd has done a lot of travel, right? And I'm, I'm sure, I know that you've got more than one, one globe in your office. We've already counted. <laughs> However, we felt, Alita and I felt this was the nicest one of all. No, really so, nice. and it just says on a congratulations, to Dr. Todd McClair. Thank you very much. That's awesome. That's awesome. My report tonight too. Oh, that was a good one too. Let's keep. I've on. never had a better sense of relief. In my life. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> but thank you very much. It's a big deal too. It really is. Thank you. Why? All right. Um, new business: School Councils, Hale Middle School, Luther Burbank, and Shoba Regional High School. Great. What do we got? Well, yeah, they can all come up to the front. So this is what we did last time. You can. Feel free to all come up to the table. You may have to pull an extra chair or a, a to a side. Um, and we'll probably do it exactly as it's listed. We'll start with um, Hale Middle School first, then with their birthday, and, and wrap up with the high school. And, uh, you guys want to sit here? Please introduce yourself okay. so that we know who you are and who you represent. That's right. Hi, so uh, this is Teresa Reardon. Um, she is our parent representative at our school, uh, our middle school council. Um, she just kind of walked through a lot of the different things that we've been working on throughout this school year. Um, so uh, I guess we'll get started. Great, thank you. Feel free to go ahead. 
I guess I can remember. There's your membership. Members, right? yes. so these, the these are all our members. I don't, I'm not. I'm not. We've only got a few minutes. I'm not going to go through everyone. But we, as you can see, we have um, a mixture of different uh, faculty member representation, uh, <coughs> representation, and we have three student reps. Those are also um, members of our student council. Those three students are. Okay. So. I'm fighting a little bit of a cold, but I was telling Mr. Grady I made it through a 35-minute presentation yesterday, so we'll see how we do here. We have, so what we've been working on is a school improvement plan and some of the goals. We've come up with some four, four goals. And so we, when we look at the goals, the first goal is to develop, um, watch, they're in right now. Okay, so the first goal is we're talking about the, um, Digital li literacy and um, developing some school some skills um, such as uh, the um, typing skills and it was the first year of this program the typing skills the coding skills and software design so it was the first year that this has uh, been implemented and it's going very well. Yeah, so if you see uh, this, the goal one is on the left and it directly across from that is a bullet point that sort of connects with our points of pride. So one of the ways that we're trying to accomplish meeting that first goal is by um, the creation of two, two, two classes. One is um, uh, digital literacy and computer science craft, a class. We also have a plus class that's been retooled to really incorporate more practical skills for students to use while, while they have their Chromebooks. And then we also had an event this year, a career and innovation day which was a great success. We had members of the community come in who work at everything from chefs to people who got to create fiber optic cable that is um, uh, up in the space station right now. So it was really, it really helped helps our students o open up their eyes um, to uh, the skills that they need, but also the careers that these skills can lead to. So any questions on that? No. Nope. No, okay. The, the second goal had to do with um, the ELA program and, you know, the reading and writing skills, we have found over um, time that the, the MCAS scores were okay, but there was, obviously we, could, we thought there's room for improvement. So what we did was we're working with the middle school teachers across the district to implement a more um, reading and writing model to address those needs. And the third goal has to do with um, community event, um, I'm sorry, the vocal survey, which is voice on climate and learning. And it was an eighth grade survey done to sort of get a feel for um, inter interventions or identify some solutions to different things that we found were going on in the school. And it was a great survey, I looked at the survey and had a lot of good points to it. And then the second thing was community events and doing some activities. What we have right now is the highest uh, enrollment in the sports and activity programs, and Mr. Grady had brought in some new clubs and bring, you know things to bring the community together. We have a lot of dances, a lot of um, activities that center around that. We're going to do a family movie night and a community dinner, which is looking the forward to the community dinner. Yeah, and there's a lot of families that have currently. Yeah, we have about 215 families that are uh, going to be showing up for our community dinner. But again, that goes back to this idea of like. You know, cultivating an environment like like you saw tonight with um, with a GSA, creating an environment where students feel welcome and that they, they see it as not just a place of learning, but a, a place for them um, to share fun experiences with their peers and with their um, a lot with their siblings and their and their families. So um, our final one was really is really about uh, safety, um, and that that's something that clearly matches what's going on at the district level. Um, a safety audit was performed in all the buildings of last year, um, but we looked closely at that safety audit to inform what we need to do moving forward, in particular around training for our students and training for our staff. But we've also had some really unique training, not, not just in, in regards to the sort of Alice model, but also some things that have happened even for um, folks like our custodians. You know, they were just out on a, on a particular training on Tuesday up over the spring break. So. Um, I think what, what has happened is at the district level, there's been a, a really deep dive into this and it's percolated into what we're doing around safety um, in our buildings uh, and all that. Because one of the concerns, and as we look through a lot of different surveys and a lot of different, um, you know, the parent survey, one of the biggest concerns with safety is, you know, I send my child to school and, you know, how safe are they? And, you know, as you know, things are so different now. And they were, and it's it's not necessarily about you know shelter in place anymore. It's you know, how do we get away? 
and those kind of things. Great. Any questions? Any questions? Thank you. Thank you for having us. <coughs> Monica Smith and I, my, uh, our co-chair for the Arlie the Burbank Middle School Council are honored to be here to speak to you, uh, just to give you a glimpse into our school council and tell you what we've been working on. So I'm going to turn it over to Monica, and Monica's going to tell you the makeup of our council. Good evening. Thanks for having us here today, participating in this meeting. Um, I'm here to represent Luther Burbank along with the principal, Laura Friend. I'm one of the parents of the school, and this is my second year um, of servicing the um, school council. Um, our school council is made up of four parents, four faculties, and two administrators. Um, a highly dedicated group of people. Um, it's very helpful for us to meet as a group together and share the different perspectives between the school and the community. Um, we follow some school meeting norms which has been developed that guide us to our discussion when we meet. We meet um, once a month and we included a meeting during February vacation and during that meeting we discussed the school improvement plan. Um, our council supports a collaboration with the community, between the community and the families. Um, we strive to be honest and transparent in all the social um, We have worked through a variety. We have worked through a variety of topics. Um, for an example, we navigated the topics of homework and school safety and social and emotional wellness for our students. Uh, this year we spent a good amount of time evaluating the old school plan, um, improvement plan, and we've been working on developing the new plan, and Ms. Friend will be, Laura will be talking to us about that plan today. Yeah, okay. <laughs> this is, we're not going to go into details, just to give you an overview. <laughs> we're excited because our old school improvement plan was a five-year plan. And we love the idea of um, a two-year plan, and that's what has been working for the district, so we follow along suit. So we're excited to embark upon this new two-year plan. It's just going to give us more focus, um, more clarity, and a direction in which we're going to be able to head quickly. So we're excited about that. We've got three goals. Those three goals align with district initiatives and what's happening in our sister schools in Bolton and Stowe. And it's really tight and focused. Um, we're proud of it and we're excited to begin that work, which we already have begun that work this year, but we're looking really um, forward to digging in next year. Our points of pride, as Mr. Grady had indicated, are, are very similar. We, as we developed our new school improvement plan, we used the data available to us to help inform and guide our needs, and that included the mobile survey data results, our prior um, school council set parent uh, satisfaction survey, which we administered last spring, and we will be doing again this spring, and then how we did on our old school improvement plan. So that informed our work with our new plan. Our new school improvement plan reflects areas of continued growth, all for the student at the center, all focusing on student empowerment, and that takes various forms from curriculum and instruction to technology integration to extracurriculars. As Mr. Grady uh, had indicated, we too are proud of the expansion of our extracurricular offerings. I know we spoke about this during the budget season, and we know that it's critically important for our middle school students to be involved and to spread their wings and develop relationships and figure out who they are. That's what middle school is all about. So our, our participation rate right now is at 74%. That includes all extracurricular. We're really proud of that. And we're continuing to pitch it up, hopefully, um, with the year to come. And as Monica has said, community engagement is really important. And so we're always looking at new and innovative ways to bring the community in to share their expertise and sh um, be a mentor. This year, for example, we developed a talent pool <coughs> bank. Um, we surveyed parents about their careers, their skills, their interests, 
um, their mentorship capacity and so our staff now have a bank a pool of resources that they can look to and pull in um, in real time uh, in terms of curriculum tie-ins and instruction tie-ins we um, for example in our eighth grade our students completed uh, a unit on the court system and the justice system and they finished reading 12 angry men and we're fortunate to have a parent come in and speak to our eighth graders who happens to be a judge and she supported their learning with real world connection she <coughs> talked about the court system she talked about what it took to become an attorney and then to make that transition to the judgeship and so that was really powerful this for the students and so we're looking forward to continuing that model as an example next year do you have to live in Lancaster to do it? Absolutely not. <laughs> no. So thank you. And, you. and you have a book study. We have a book study that's coming that out um, is coming down the pipe next year. We're yeah. excited about that. And so we have a um, parent-teacher book study that will be starting next year. We sent a survey out Monday, <coughs> and that survey um, said to our parents, are you interested in this idea? What format works for you? And then we listed 10 really cool titles and we asked our parents to select which ones would be of interest to them, and so we're gonna roll that out next year in a collaborative learning experience. So it'll be interesting to see which book is selected and how it'll go. But we've, we are, I, we've already had, when I looked yesterday, we had 18 parents who said that they would be interested, and that was, was yesterday, Tuesday? Yeah, so that was <laughs> one day, so mm -hmm. um, we're excited about that. Awesome, thank you. Thank you. Hi, folks. Uh, um, I'm uh, pleased to have with me tonight Megan Curran, a member of the class of 2019, who has served on the school council for four years. Um, this is, uh, she's the, I want to say, the longest tenured member of our, of our current school council. Um, and Dan DeMeo, who is a member of the class of 2020, and this is his third year uh, on the council. Um, the list of council members, uh, like Kyle, Kyle's and Laura's schools, involves uh, students, parents, uh, teachers, commu a community member. Uh, Kelsey Burpee is a graduate of Neshoba, and she was also a graduate of our EMT program, so uh, to have her come back is, uh, is terrific. Um, we've added a number of new students, particularly at the grade 10 and 9 level uh, this year, so that's been, that's been uh, uh, very exciting. I'm going to turn things over to Megan and Dan to talk for a minute about the work we do and uh, maybe even how you got involved uh, in this work. Um, yeah, I'll talk about how we got involved. Go so uh, freshman year, we have a class that's like work, kind of like study, you learn how to take the notes and how to just go through high school, and it's with Mr. E. And in it, he talked about this club, not really a club since it has like parents and teachers in it, but like another activity you can do with the school and he didn't really give a lot of information about it. There wasn't really a lot to it that we know about, but you just had to write a one to two page paper kind of about things that you'd want to change in a show or like ideas you have for the school, which is crazy to think of doing as a freshman, but you come in with just like a little bit of knowledge and you just kind of think of things that are interesting to you that you talked about in um, middle school and then you can write about that and you get picked. So I'm not really sure how many people do it from each grade because I know it's a different way now. Like I think we have a different way of selecting the kids now. But I got picked for that my freshman year and going to the meetings, we have meetings about once a month for an hour and I wasn't really sure what to expect but I'm really glad I did it because it's really interesting. I love learning about behind the scenes things of the school and just it's interesting to learn about things you don't really know as a student and then take that into consideration, like going through the hallway and seeing new initiatives put in plan. Um, yeah, and we, we are the Neshoba Regional High School School Council, so our main um, objective, our main goals um, as a council is to serve the Neshoba Regional High School in the best way that we can. Um, basically, what we do within our council is we work on school improvement. How can, how can Neshoba Regional High School be better improved um, for all for all children and staff um, in both you know in all all grades nine through twelve, um, it's it's a really cool council and, and and like Megan said you know what what we did um, freshman year we 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 were selected to serve have the honor of serving on this council um, this council is a council that.
provides not only students with the uh, responsibilities and with the um, and with the opportunities to kind of put place um, different initiatives for the high school, but also staff and parents and community members. And I think having all all those different perspectives of both staff and students and community members, parents, I think provides a real, um, a very different and unique kind of way to approach school-wide initiatives um, and school-wide goals that we can implement at our own school to make to make Nishobu Regional High School the best that we that we want it to be. Thank you so much. So, uh, like uh, like the other school improvement plans, uh, we've got uh, three goals. Um, I think at the center of the three goals, student success, uh, staff growth, and innovation in the classroom, um, as well as student social and emotional and physical well-being. Uh, those are very much tied into uh, the district goals. And, and I would think that um, any, any successful school is going to have these values at, at its heart, I, I, I would hope. And I think you would find those those pretty consistent across the board when you're dealing with successful schools. Uh, we have there's a lot to be proud of that's that's gone on in the last uh, uh, in the last year just this year alone. Um, the ongoing success of our uh, reality fair, uh, which brings in a number of folks from the community, business people as well as um, um, uh, chambers of commerce and, and other folks. Um, our challenge day was such a hit this year. Uh, introduced on a, on a modified scale that next year we're going to roll it out to all of grade 10. Uh, so we've already started planning that. Um, another thing that we were happy to do was uh, we have two folks in our in our school trained as mental health first aid, uh, uh, providing mental health first aid and teaching educators how to do that. We've now expanded that into the community. So not only to our coaches, but to our parents. Um, how do you recognize it? What do you do when you recognize a, a, a mental health crisis uh, that a you know, student may be uh, experiencing? Um, and I think that's a wonderful way to, uh, much as Laura's book club and, and uh, the night that Kyle's inviting folks in for dinner, kind of break down the walls uh, to the community and, and have folks come in and see, and see what's going on. Um, our, our English department over the past few years under Kim Early's leadership, uh, she's our department chair, has really done terrific work uh, in literacy and, and really bumping that up. She presented last year to you, and I was just looking at, the, at their final product uh, that they did at the end of all their PD, and um, uh, very impressive. And um, uh, what it means for that department as a whole and the consistency of instruction uh, across the English department, um, it, it, I, I can't say enough about it. Student success in, in programs such as uh, the music competitions, DECA, uh, Best Buddies, our athletic program, uh, represented by uh, Tanya tonight, and, uh, and robotics, who are in Detroit right now competing. Uh, the Blue Alliance, um, they rode out on a bus to Detroit last night, so uh, that's, where they, that's where they're rocking and rolling today. Um, you know, we've got to grow that. Students have a lot of, at, at the high school level, there's a lot of competing interests. They're involved in a lot of things, they work outside of school, they take demanding course loads, but we recognize also that the, that the activities that they do in school foster a sense of community, and we hope to um, cross-fertilize student groups, get them to know one another a little bit better, help them relax, uh, de-stress. Um, we're planning for the spring a, uh, a um, ping-pong tournament that I, I spoke to a couple gentlemen about yesterday, which will which will uh, raise some money for the Red Cross and hopefully just Let's see if it's have some fun. <coughs> um, a couple of other things on here that deserve mentioning. Um, we're always looking for, for student success in, in the first goal. It's going to be in the classroom, but it's going to be outside the classroom as well. And uh, there are a number of people in our school, uh, chief among them, Mary Murata, who is uh, department chair in applied arts. Uh, the work she has done to connect with local businesses, AIS for one, resulted in a uh, uh, an internship uh, for a young man this <coughs> summer, a paid internship. Um, students have, uh, the folks at AIS, uh, their management team has come over to uh, share their expertise with our students uh, in a number of competitions, and I can't thank Mary enough for her work with that. Um, you know, the last item there, the recent local and national rankings, um, both in local press and national press, 
it was very nice, but you don't, we all know, you don't rest on that. There, there are a lot of factors involved with that. And while you certainly enjoy it and, and will we'll, um, um, we'll accept it, you also realize that that's all built on a number of other schools that these students have come up from and the efforts of a number of other people who, who, send, who send their students to us. Um, and I, I think as, as long as we keep the goals or the values of student success, um, growth and innovation, and uh, social emotional well-being, I think regardless of whether we actually show up in a ranking, I think we'll be able to feel good about the work that's going on at the high school. Great. Thank you, Paul. Awesome. Anybody have any questions <coughs> on the table? I think you all did a great job. Thank you. Thanks, Elaine? Thank you. Um, what are some of the mediums that you all are using to communicate the actual work that the school councils are doing <coughs> out to the broader school community or the community at large? Because there's, there's a lot about like just building relationships in general, but how are you disseminating the actual work of the school council? Well, I would say, first of all, like, like our school improvement plan, um, like Laura's, is, ours is a, is a three-year plan. It's, it's, it's on our website. It's posted up there for folks to see that. Um, but I, I, there isn't, you know, on our part, there isn't any direct communication about this is um, you know, what we're doing for goal one other than on that plan. Um, I think tacitly, when you look at some of these things indirectly, that they're, they're, we're meeting our goal. We still have a lot of growth in front of us. Um, so I, I think generally, a communication Improving our communication is something that we're always working at trying to do, and um, that improving um, our communication around where our school improvement plan is is, is um, you know, probably something we could we could look at. Um, you know, but I, I don't I, I know I can't speak for the people aside from publishing it um, on our website. It's not something that's directly pushed out to families. We use our Burbank Bulletin uh, as a means to uh, much like I think it's the Sawyer Happenings tool. Yes. Very similar in like um, to push out information to families, and uh, that's um, we use the tools more for newsletters. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's neat because it can tell you how many views, how many interactions, sure. mm -hmm. right? People have had with the newsletter, and and that tool I think has broadened the communication to the greater community, which I think was part of your question too. So. Um, the school improvement plan will be communicated through that venue. As well, we use our survey to both garner information and educate families about what we're working on and how we're doing. And so sometimes we'll include a question or a statement in the survey that maybe isn't going to give us a bulk of information, but its purpose is to educate. Informative. Yeah. Yes. Uh, and um, we think that that's helpful too. Well, I know the first email I'm going to send out tomorrow is to Laura to ask her for her parents' survey. <laughs> <laughs> I'm working with another principal. Uh, he's got a survey that he's used in the past. We want to send one up this, uh, uh, this spring. This, uh, earlier this winter, uh, we surveyed um, grades 9 through 12 at the high school uh, using the, uh, the vocal survey that's been designed uh, by the BESC. Um, we do all the things that, that you would expect people to do, websites and bulletins and those kinds of things, but I think what, what complicates it at, at the high school, and we're trying to work with students to better understand it, is where are they? Uh, you know, I always feel like uh, you know, once you're on Twitter, they're on, they're on to something else, so you're kind of always chasing that. Um, and also, I know at the high school, whether you're talking about DECA or robotics or athletics, there are so many uh, Twitter accounts, Twitter mm -hmm. feeds, that just the sheer amount of information that's produced by these groups I think can be, um, it can result in some static, you know, the message doesn't quite uh, get through. So we're working with students, we have uh, some new members on our climate and culture committee, uh, as well as our school, school council, to think about how, can, how we can, how we can uh, improve communication with students, students especially. We, uh, we, I don't want to leave. I, I don't want to make it sound like we don't do surveys. Interestingly, in our in our last survey last year, we have received comments about not having so many surveys sent out. That there was a bit of survey fatigue, <laughs> <laughs> you know, to kind of slow that 
but I think, you know, again, to go back to your, your initial point, well, I don't, I mean, I, I don't think a, a lot of families actually know that we have a three-year school improvement plan <laughs> and what the exact goals are for that and how we're trying to achieve that goal. It's, it's a lot of volunteer hours that are put in by our school council members, so, you know, I think it's probably something um, I need to go back and think about. We might need to go back and think about how, how do we get that out. Thank you. Lynn has a quick question. Uh, yeah, you mentioned it. What's the climate and culture meeting at the high school? It's a, it's a group that uh, we created last year to look at climate and culture. And, uh, you know, how do, that's not ever something that um, I think you can never say, or we've got climate and culture down pat. There it is. It's good. No, it's always growing. It's always changing. So um, there are uh, a number of uh, students on it. There's also um, a number of teachers, uh, school psychologists, um, guidance counselor, and um, we uh, last year our, our, one of the big things we worked on was a proposal uh, that we forwarded to the uh, uh, subcommittee, policy subcommittee on uh, sexual harassment, uh, student to student sexual harassment. Um, this year we um, we looked at the vocal survey. We identified a survey we wanted to use then looked at the results once we got the survey back, and now we're saying, okay, how, how can we work with staff to understand what this survey is saying and act upon it uh, in, a, in, in a way that's gonna benefit the school. All right. Thank you, thank you all for coming thank and you, sharing. Thank you, everyone, I really appreciate, appreciate that. Yeah, thank, thank you so much. Thank you for, for having us, thank, thank you. you, appreciate it. it. Um, have a seat. Well, first, I mean, superintendent oh. <laughs> <laughs> Principal Dee Domenico, don't go anywhere. You're still on the Yeah, the Neshoba Regional High School Late Start Calendar Review request is next. And we'll let you take a couple of sips. Thanks. So I'll ask Superintendent Clenchy to intro the topic. Well, I actually I think that uh, Principal Dee Domenico will do a good job with this. Uh, we just are, are asking for a slight change here, and, and perhaps you can just explain in some detail about why that happened. Yeah, it's, um, let me find my last sheet here. Here it is, the revised final schedule. Taking us up to the last day. Um, we had one snow day this year that bumped it up to the, uh, to the 18th. But more importantly, something's happened both last year and in, in the, uh, the 1920 calendar that was just um, uh, accepted. I made a mistake. I, I, when I was reading that calendar in that calendar subcommittee, I overlooked the fact that on the last day of school, traditionally Neshoba has had finals. And I, I, didn't, I just missed that. I missed it last year and I missed it this year. So I'm gonna be coming back next year to, to ask for the same for the same slight change mm -hmm. it's nothing in terms of time on learning or um, you know, minutes spent in the classroom or preparedness for students um, it's just an oversight on my part uh, no biggie so what would you like us to do I would like um, to uh, the late starts uh, in the current uh, well I'm not going to confuse your too many dates but we're just um, we're bumping up the, the late starts by um, by a couple of days, so that instead of resting on the 11th, 12th, and 13th, the late starts would be on the 13th, 14th, and 17th of June. That's a Thursday, Friday, and Monday. And then um, those would be late starts with finals. And then on June 18th, a Tuesday, which is the last day of school, would be a regular start time. And that's, of course, the half day for the district. All right. So Alina graciously helped us by writing out the uh, motion. I'm going to have Kathy read it. Um, move to approve the, the Neshoba Regional High School late start calendar revision of June 13th, 14th, and 17th as late starts, and June 18th as a regular start half day of school. June 11th and 12th will be regular school days. Do you have a second? Second. Thanks, Steve. Any questions? Yeah. So we're losing one late start. We're going from five to four. This I don't is think for, so. This is for finals, Lynn. I know, but I'm, I'm looking up here. It looks like we're losing one. Well, one. let's let Principal Dean then go answer that. No. Um, That's a regular one. Nope. Mm -hmm. it's, it's okay. okay. Yep. Okay. All good? good. Well, we're going down by one. That's fine. I don't think so. Well, because 11, 12, and 13 became 13, 14, and 17, and 14 is 
regular start time half day. And 17 was bumped up, so that's fine. Uh, that's if again I'll 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 I've looked at this now that once I realized I made a yeah, mistake I looked at this countless times it is the same number of late starts because the number of finals hasn't changed that's if anything it's a miss I I, I, uh, I probably the June 14th doesn't need to be in there right. because there's nothing right. next to right. it right 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 it's the one on the, on the right that's the, that's the, the, the most important. so you're swapping the sub, the 18th okay. for the 17th right yeah. yes all right okay uh, are you good. Okay. All those in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> All righty then. Uh, Minuteman Middle School positions. Will you share with us what's going on? Absolutely. Thank you. And I think that Elise is going to bring up a presentation. Is it in the packet? I know. We just oh. pulled it together. Okay. Uh, yeah. Late this afternoon. Yeah. So we and, and I know that um, Principal Grady is here and. I think his principal friend here and so uh, principal Bates as well. All of our middle school principals are here this evening too, so if we have any additional questions that you think are more specific for them, then we can uh, okay. certainly ask them. So the, mid, the middle, Minute Man Middle School positions has been in place for a number of years. And in essence, each building, each middle school within the Neshoba Regional School District has one in each of their buildings. And um, I can just put the first one. So all three middle schools right now have this position in it. It does say in the contract that I managed to locate that this should be reevaluated every single year. We haven't done that since I've been here. And so, uh, but last year I started to look a little bit deeper and trying to understand it a little bit more because uh, just coming into the district, what I heard was the Minuteman positions, but I didn't really understand what that meant, um, other than that they're Minuteman employees. Uh, and so that's key for you to keep in mind too, because they're not NRSD employees, they're Minuteman employees. The contract in place cites that the program is to serve as an extension of Minuteman Regional Vocational School District in terms of its mission, education, program materials, mobile equipment, PD, and staffing. So that's the very first part of the contract. Next item. In order to terminate this contract, if we choose to terminate, which is one of the things I'm suggesting this evening, NRSD must give a year's notice to Minuteman. Now, I understand that once I understood how these positions were being paid for, I understand why there needs to be that year, and I'll explain that as we work through this. Currently, within the entire Minuteman, um, and, and David, maybe if I'm wrong, I'm sure you'll correct me, but my understanding is that there are five schools that have this in play right now. Neshoba has three of them. So three of five in the entire Minuteman collective. And how many schools are there in the in the middle school? I don't, I don't no, know. so it's ten. Thank you. Districts or schools? Ten, there are ten sending communities. Right. So there so are multiple schools. Multiple within. schools. Yeah. Okay. Like we're a community, we have like three schools. Okay. Okay. So the three area, the th some of the areas of challenge right now is that the three current teachers are paid for via the Minuteman Regional Vocational School District Enterprise. I put that word enterprise in there, organization, you can call it whatever. That's where their paychecks come from, right? That's where their benefit, everything comes out of Minuteman. Um, and they are on their union contract. So they're, they're not a Neshoba employee, they're not a union member, they're not, they're not um, open to our benefits, nothing like that. It's strictly Minuteman. Mm -hmm. The funding for these positions, though, does not come from Minuteman. It comes from each of our three communities. So our three communities are already paying for these positions. I did not know this until about a year and a half ago as I started to dig to better understand the context of how this has all come about. 
And so I've had communication with our town administrators on this because I didn't exactly understand how the funding worked at that point in time. Um, so the, the town administrators went back to take a look at their assessments and that's where it is. So when, when the towns get their assessments in from Minuteman, this particular position is included in that overarching assessment. So in essence, Lancaster, Bolton, and Stowe are paying for those three positions on their annual assessment, which makes sense now when you say, that's why you need a year to terminate this because the assessments, for example, right now, are already available to our three communities. So we couldn't terminate them in between because the assessments are already in play to be voted at the next town meeting. So I understand why there needs to be that year's time. But that's a long time. I mean, that's the other side of this, is that's a long time to ferment or make decisions on or, or whatever it is. So, but for the fiscal component, it makes every sense that we have to give a year's notice. So if we're looking to terminate this come next June, we have to give notice this June. Go to the next slide. Uh, so another area that we feel is complicated at times or awkward is with regards to supervision and evaluation because these are not our teachers. Now, our principals can um, certainly give forward any, um, um, any type of input or feedback that they want to give, but at the end of it, there's really a principal that oversees these positions and George Clement, I believe, is the principal that oversees this. Who's not part of the Who district. is also not our part district. of our district, right? He, he is part of the Minuteman district. So you can see that supervision and evaluation can also be complex as we try to work through this. The curriculum also is a Minuteman made curriculum. Um, and, and I don't want to, I, I, that's not to say anything wrong or it, but it's, it, just to say that it's not an Ashoka Regional School District uh, developed curriculum. It's not a bad curriculum, and I want to put that as a, you know, as, as a pre-qualifier to all of this. this. This is not at all about poor teaching or um, poor relationships or poor curriculum. None of that is at play here. So I want to be really, really clear on that, that that's not what this is about. But we do have some different vision on this. Moving forward, one of the things that the district would, what we are suggesting is NRSD, is we would like to maintain a similar STEM literacy program. However, the Shoka Regional School District would hire teachers who would belong to our unit, our staff, the expectations, times of departure and arrival, which by the way have not been problematic, but are all the same for Neshoba Regional School District. PD expectations, etc. everything would be the same. We're just feeling that we're in a bit of an awkward position right now with these positions not being true Neshoba Regional School District positions. We, are, we, we have full faith in the programs. Um, we love what's presented right now, so we're not wanting to change this full scale, but we want to evolve the program. And there are some parts that, that we feel, for example, as we look forward to next year, and, and I'm gonna have Dr. McGuire speak here in a minute as well. As we look forward, for example, to the social emotional components that we're looking to embed in our culture, within the Shoba Regional School District, those are things that we're training our folks on. We're sending our people out to come back, the Neshoba Regional. And so, it, we, again, it just, it just feels awkward right now. And we're not sure where the lines, the lines are so blurred right now that it feels uncomfortable. And so that's another area as we look to our next 
district improvement plan and you hear the school improvement plans coming along here. We're looking broader and we want that piece of it to be integrated as we move forward into the digital literacy component and the STEM component. Now keep in mind, because we're giving a year's notice, that would that basically means that we would be status quo for this entire upcoming year. So those positions would stay in place. Um, just for uh, FYI, um, Mary uh, at Florence Sawyer is retiring, so it won't really affect her at the end of next year. The of next year. So that would be a natural um, attrition. Uh, yeah, natural attrition. And then we, we still have a teacher, of course, um, Lisa Sama at um, Luther Burbank and uh, Liam at, um, uh, at Hale. In talking this through with our town administrators, because this is a fair chunk of money, and this is three positions. And from Neshoba's perspective, I'm not prepared to lose, this has got nothing to do with Minuteman, this is just looking through the Neshoba lens. I'm not prepared to lose those positions, and I'm not prepared to lose that type of a program. But it is a good time for us to look and say, can we evolve this program differently with Neshoba stamp on it? rather than the Minuteman stamp. Not that there's anything wrong with the Minuteman stamp. We're not saying that, but we are looking and saying, what, what can we do with this? So we've spoken with our middle school uh, principals, Dr. McGuire and our teaching and learning unit, and we feel that we've got time within this year now to map out exactly what we're looking for. It's also a good time for us because the new standards and frameworks have just come down for, um, for STEM. And, and literacy, the digital literacy component. So we feel that this is a good point in time to be having a fresh look at this. Um, so in talking, going back to and talking to the um, town administrators about this, you know, for example, and it's, it, it doesn't exactly work out like this, but if you were to say it was 100,000 per community, which, by the way, doesn't work out like that, but if it was, if all things were equal, no, nothing's ever equal, I said, you know, I can't afford to lose that $100,000 per community. It's just too much money, and I need those positions too badly, and we need this program too badly, whatever that looks like. So, you know, we, what, what could that look like fiscally? And one of them just said to me the other day when we were talking about it again, he said, you know, as far as I'm concerned, it's a wash for us because the money's already going out anyway, so it doesn't matter whether that money is going out to Minuteman or that money is going out to NRSD. It's just a wash. But next year at this time when we go to do the town meetings, of course, there'll be that, whatever that change is, there'll be a tweak on there. But it's nothing new, it's just, it would be coming out of the same bucket but into a different bucket, that's all. So that's in a, a kind of a a broad space, and I'm going to have you speak, and then I'm going to come back and kind of finish things up. So, sure. so you know, we've spoken from a curricul curriculum perspective and a curricular angle, and we also took a look at you know the history of this program, and we, we took on this program in 2006, and that certainly was far prior um, to being into a one-to-one -one environment. And I think actually it was before 2006. Okay. It was 2006, so I took it as well. Stowe. Okay. It goes yeah. back to the. When I was here, we mm -hmm. had it, and yeah. we actually got, eliminated it because we had technology education at Hale. And oh. then at somewhere along the line, it came back. 2006, it, it came was back to Stowe. redundancy, still. I think it was around 95, 96, that we, you know, only The program came. started in 1991. Thanks. Great. Great. So far prior to being in a you know, a one to one environment, a one to one environment is the environment in which we are in. Um, we've had a smooth rollout of that environment, um, six through twelve. This past particular year, we've certainly rolled that out to all of our middle school students in a in a real concentrated, methodical way. Um, I think when we're looking to build. Um, these kinds of programs and when we hire, we're hiring teachers now in that particular area with a STEM focus and a STEM background and are coming from places with that kind of a focus and also an interdisciplinary focus. Uh, also, you know, we've hired on uh, ITS in our 
uh, specialists in our uh, teaching and learning department this year who've done a lot of work in integrating in those middle schools and are really working at uh, bringing those digital literacy curriculum standards and sort of crosswalking those with the, the disciplines that exist. So we feel real confident to be able to build those kinds of programs within Neshoba, um, as well as just the, the programs, the professional <coughs> development now that exists for teachers. You know, Martina Kenyon was here earlier this, uh, this winter talking about the STEM scopes programs that we're bringing in, which is a lot of that hands-on engineering focus for middle school students as well as elementary. We have Project Lead the Way programs that focus on engineering, um, biological sciences at the high school levels. And so a lot of these now are, are package programs that offer the professional development for our teachers um, to be able to implement them. Um, and it's, it is just a newer age with um, the applications and the software that we're able to bring and download onto Chromebooks or bring into some of our labs that we, that we have um, in our existing buildings. I think the other thing that you know, with with this, of course, will also come that that we'll be losing some of the some of the equipment that um, that has come into this program um, over the course of the years. However, some of it is also now antiquated. I mean, that's just the business that we're in. As we've had multiple discussions around the state well, regarding that, this also gives us a year. We've we've, as I say, we have been having this discussion for probably about a year and a half looking at all things and saying is this the route that we want to take and we knew that we had to do do that year's notice of, of termination so when I spoke with Dr. Bacquillan uh, several weeks ago on this this topic I said this is where I think we're, we're headed so that there was I, I didn't want him to feel blindsided or sure. such so I went and and, uh, and I had face to face I didn't want to do this through emails um, so we had a we had a good chat at that point in time, uh, but this also gives us. So we've been talking about this. We've got some plan. For example, uh, and I think it's Hale. For example, I think you already have a new 3D printer. For example, yeah. already lined up for this coming year. Yes, correct. In the you know, um, so some of the the bigger things that we may lose along the way here, we already have started to develop a plan for a replacement. Um, so that this becomes again a made in Neshoba uh, program. Um, I feel that we have the staff to do it right now. I think that we have the drive, we have the will. Um, in terms of those teachers, I, uh, you know, again, these, these are not our teachers, so they're not our responsibility. Um, with that being said, though, when we open those positions in our, in our vision, if we open them, I'm thinking March or April of next year, because by that point in time, we'll, we'll know exactly what um, we're, we're looking for at that point in time. We, we would encourage those teachers, of course, to make application, but we'll do a full scale search just as we do with everything. Um, and one of the other things, too, that, that you know we were talking about with the work that we've been doing on a regular basis is we consistently do upgrades and such. For uh, for example, like I know that she came the other day yeah, and yeah. wanted to know, do I upgrade the Minuteman um, equipment, labs, the labs, labs for next year? And we said yes, because everything's staying the same. But you can see how things kind of get muddy here. <laughs> uh, this is, again, I want to be really clear, this is not in any way, shape, or form a negative slant to Minuteman or the administration that that came into this agreement at that point in time because I understand if you take a look back I mean 1999 that was a that was what in terms of technology that's a <laughs> lot of years ago but we feel that we've come a long way and we feel very comfortable with where we're at right now we feel that we have the staff to move this forward and continue on so, uh, so that's uh, in, in a nutshell where, where we're standing tonight. So, uh, Lita, if you could just go to the last slide for me, please. So, I'm coming forward to tonight to, to recommend that, that you think on the notion of termination of that particular component of our relationship with Minuteman. I want to be clear, too, we value and respect our relationship with Minuteman. This is not bringing a halt into all things that are Minuteman oriented. This is just this one piece of the pie, this one program uh, with these three teachers at the middle school level. From a child's perspective, a student going through, will this 
will this program be lost or what is this specific Minuteman program would be lost but what we feel we can bring to that in its place we feel that there would be no loss to the children so we feel very comfortable in bringing that forward to, to you tonight but we're certainly open to discussion and if you have questions and if I don't have the answers I'm happy to go back and look further into it. All right before you start I just want to just want to do a quick overview because that yep. was a lot. A lot so of information. Thanks. Yeah a lot of information so um, and the reason I'm doing this is because late this afternoon I got a flurry of phone calls <coughs> from people and I'm disappointed because I think the information that was put out on social media was not accurate and that's not fair to parents, right? So they get the garage. Pardon? I was just saying surprise, surprise. <laughs> so, and I don't think it was anybody's intent to mislead, I think. But, so let's level set what we're talking about here and then we can open it up for discussion. You are not recommending, I'm making notes while you're talking, so if I got something wrong, correct me. You are not recommending that the that Neshoba cease its relationship with Minuteman. I am not. That is not a recommendation. <coughs> you are not recommending that the eighth grade tech ed STEM program goes away. Right, this is not a cut, for example, like with the budget. That, that's not what this is. Okay, um, I just want to make sure because I think there's a lot and I want people to get it and, and take this down so people get the, you know, the facts as she's stating them. Um, that you are actually recommending a change in resourcing. That's absolutely correct. Okay, so, <coughs> it, all right, let me see if there's one more. Um, that Todd's work, Dr. McGuire's work, <laughs> um, with, the, with the new tech plan mm -hmm. that you've put in place, this would become a major component of it. So I think those things are really important to understand. I'm not saying one way or the other. I just, I just want to make sure because I think what was put out on, on social media, and I literally got calls from people in Lancaster and Stowe as well as Bolton, was that Minuteman's going away. Why is the superintendent doing this? How come nobody knew about it? I'm like, I don't even know what the heck people are talking about. I caught myself. Um, the other thing I want to just level set that you said a couple things and I want to hang on to those is one of the other things that I had heard was that that nobody knew about this and it just kind of happened. But it sounds like you just said a little bit ago that you spoke with Ed McQuillan. Yeah, several, several weeks ago. So he knew about that. Yes. So if his folks didn't know about that, then that's, that's, not, that's, your, that's not your responsibility. Okay, so that, that, that's something that you guys need to talk to your superintendent about. Like that, that, that can't fall on us. Yeah. He, um, he, knew that, he knew that this was coming, certainly. Um, and, and I said to him, I'd given him several weeks lead times, and you know, I knew that again because it doesn't. It, it's not a lot to figure out that a year's time has to be from June to June, and that means that we have to make the decision sometime in May in order to be able to do this. So to All me, right. it's, it was simple. So the other thing I heard is that you want to create synergies with the Neshoba Regional School District curriculum. Right. I want, I have a question and then I'm going to, sorry guys, I have to do this because I'm like, I can't focus on too many things I should, okay. If there are only five schools in, across all of the Minuteman communities that currently have this program, and, and my kids benefited from it, right? Like, Mrs. Moahi leaving, she's amazing, like, flipping she amazing. Is. You don't know who she's paid by, you don't care, she's just amazing. Um, but she's retiring. <laughs> so if there's five schools across the 10 communities, each community has multiple schools, what happened to the other schools? Why don't they have this program? Was it only always the five? Yes, my understanding was that it was, it was actually there. only three and then Acton Boxborough decided to emulate after seeing the, the progress and productivity within our community. Okay, so I just want to level set all that because I don't know that anybody watching, and I know that there are people who have questions about this, would have been able to pull all that together. Okay, what do you got, Kathy? First of all, thanks for 
you know, reading the contract <laughs> and <Yeah. laughs> uh, evaluating every year. Because you're right, those things go by the board, and I think about even even in school districts with their own curriculum and programs, uh, don't always evaluate them on a regular basis. So I think that's important. Um, times have changed, and it was a time where that when Hale had technology education, there was no tech ed in Bolton or Lancaster, so they really benefited from it. It was sort of redundant um, at Hale. Um, so right now, is this class part of the special schedule in the schools? Principals are all saying yes. Uh, yes. So the kids take science. Special fifth grade is integrated. So who? Is there an additional science class for, what did you say, fifth grade or sixth grade? The, these. Is it the same in all three schools? Yes, same in all three So who takes the class with the Minuteman teacher in the schools? Every sixth, seventh, and eighth grader will take one of those classes or considered a related a related arts class. So, so that's like a specials class. It's like a special, it's like like a PE class or a music right. class. And then they have the science class on team. In addition, right? I see. Which so, it, in 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 um, revamping it or crossing it over or whatever you want to call it, it will still reside in that kind of rotation. That's, that's our vision right the now. The teachers, yeah. the yes. principals decide right. otherwise. Right. So it'll remain a special, but it will be. The, the vision is to have it uh, taught by an Ashoka Regional School District right. person, but apply the same, you know, standards, the same curriculum, have a STEM focus. That's absolutely correct. And I think, you know, as we were at the principals, on, uh, we were speaking on this uh, topic maybe even two months ago, we were saying, you know, our, our goal was to kind of, uh, I don't want to say cherry pick because that's not a really good term, but we want to capitalize. We always want to build on the strengths. And we feel that the program brings a lot of strengths. There's no worries about it. So it was, can, we, can we do that? But at the same point in time, we, as an Ashoga Regional District, have our own goals and our own sure. emphasis that are separate from Minuteman. And we want those embedded with this work. And, and when we have our own staff, then we have our control over what that looks like. Can I ask a question? Oh, sure. Right. So Minuteman used to have like an after-school program for communities where kids could sign up to focus on it. Do, do we participate in that? And so we're all shaking their heads, yes, and, all three. Okay. And then there's also something in the springtime or winter or something where the whole eighth grade would go over to Minuteman for a tour and look, and we're still doing that. If that's different now, oh, okay. but, but the, that whole process is really quite different now. I guess the point is that there are opportunities for kids to for um, yeah to be exposed yes, to it, to absolutely. see it, and to understand yeah. what um, is available there. Right, and yeah. those are the things that are not going to go away. Okay. Like I say, that, that that's that's totally separate from this particular component. Okay, no, because there is that connection. No, it's a, it's a great thing. I'm glad you brought that up because I wouldn't have thought you would have brought that up. So thank you for. That. Money. So with all three grades participating, this sounds like it's more than one FTE. But it's a special. It's a special, yeah. But I mean, you've, 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 so it's once every two weeks? No, it's, it's twice a cycle. Six day six cycle? Six. Right. Yes. So in the same way that we have a PE teacher who will teach all six, seventh, and eighth graders, you have an engineering teacher who will teach all six, seventh, and eighth graders. So with, and they're going to continue with the after school program? Minute whatever, man, whatever yeah. the Minuteman, well, if the Minuteman guy goes away, and you still Oh, no, they don't do this. Minuteman has a program that they offer for kids, and they, it's like they send something out, and you see what you want to take, and then they have, they send a bus, and pick up the kids, and, oh. and I think it's free. They, you don't pay anything. I don't, I don't know. I don't think you pay. I don't think anything's free, but <laughs> <laughs> I think you made that you one mean, up. Like, <laughs> like, maybe I, I don't know, or we call differently. So, to your, your, I think your, your question is, are we going to be losing anything? Yeah. Yeah. And and we're yeah, saying we don't believe so. And I think to your question of one FTE per school, no, the, the vision is that that one FTE position is filled. So I, I'm, I'm looking and I'm saying, okay, well, personnel would have to have new job descriptions. Um, 
No, it's a teacher. No, it's a teacher because it comes into Unit A contract, so it's not. It's not necessarily. So different. how do we know that it's going to be um, replicated? But that's that's where your work with your principals and your teaching and learning unit the curriculum is built. That's that's yeah, their job. The curriculum. Yeah. Okay. But I, I would have a hard time giving something up if I don't know what's going to take its place. And and what keeps going through my mind is um, engineering the future. <clears throat> I know it's not accepted anymore, but I, we still haven't seen what's replacing it. And I just know tons of kids have just benefited from that. Mm -hmm. And so I, I would love to see before I made a decision what you're changing it to. Oh, I don't know if I agree with that. I I don't know if I agree with that. Not, I'm not, and I'm going to put myself out there now because I, I feel strongly that whatever the decision is here. The decision on building the appropriate STEM curriculum belongs to the administration that owns the program. But they're asking us to give something up. No, they're not. They're at what what I heard. What I heard is they're asking to change the resourcing, but not give up the program. If you have two different entities that are delivering the program, mm -hmm. then there will be some tweaks, but I wouldn't say that it's going to be better or worse. I, and, I, and I have to say, that one is kind of a scary one to me, because mm -hmm. I respect my I respect my administration to make the right decision or to go that way. The other thing I would say is because we have thought so long about this, we've been really thoughtful in our thinking and we've had many conversations around the table on this. This hasn't been, we made the decision this week, but we just, this has been like a year and a half of thinking this through and and then coming to the point to say, you know what, I think we're ready to move this forward. Um, I agree that there's a lot to take in here. Um, and it was, a little bit confusing, but I think I've distilled sort of the, the, the major points here. And if I understand Lynn correctly, I think I agree with her that it would be very helpful before this does go to a vote to know what the changes in what you're calling resources would be. In other words, what changes does this look like for a kiddo before and after? The resource changes is a teacher and where they're paid from. But if you're asking right, what that. the curriculum is, again, whether it happens or it doesn't happen, it stays where it is. Do we go to Minuteman and say, give us your curriculum as the school committee for Neshoba Regional School District? Do we say that? But have we like like let's like no one second, because really and truly, let's make sure we stay in the guardrails here. I'm not saying you shouldn't ask, you know, is your intent to this, but to ask for the curriculum, I mean, forget about STEM for a minute, forget about Minuteman, not forget about Minuteman, um, but forget about the subject, right? Let's pretend it's foreign language and we want to add Arabic. And would we say, give us the curriculum for teaching Arabic? No, I'm, what I'm asking is, what is the degree of change that we're, we're going to be getting with this, with this vote? In other words, is it going to look vastly different before versus after? And have we solicited feedback from parents or even students about the value of the, current, the, the, the program as it's currently constituted? So do we know what, what will be lost versus what will be gained? And I think what, what, we're, what we're suggesting to you, and by the way, I think your point is well, well made on that um, with, with regards to curriculum. I think you could take that same example and that she just gave and say, would you go out and do that for Arabic or what, whatever else you wanted to go out and ask and survey parents. And I want to be clear again, we do not see this program as being a bad program. We see it as a good program. And I mentioned earlier Understood. that our thinking is that we would, we would want to take the very best of that, but then we would want to make sure that we add our in Neshoba components that would make it a Neshoba program versus a Minuteman program. So what we're saying is we would want to take the best pieces of it and add to it. 
I guess I'm I guess I'm just looking for a little bit more specificity about what are those best qualities? What are those best qualities that we're going to retain and, and what are we going to add to it? So rather than speaking in general terms of and I, and I understand that, I understand sort of the the spirit of that. Do do we know I know the Minuteman program and I know I know how, how well it serves certain populations of kids and I'm always I'm always very sensitive to, I don't, I'm not, I don't mind the change, but I'm sensitive to changes if it's going to impact kids' experiences. And it sounds like, to some extent, the experience will be different. I'm not saying worse or better, it will be different. I'm just wondering how it will be different. So what like, will that look like? If it's different, what's, if we're saying we're going to read, it's a STEM curriculum, and we're going to implement a STEM curriculum, then, then if you look at the current curriculum, I mean, uh, there are, the differences may be nuanced, but you're looking at a, like what I, when I mentioned when I was at Hale, we had a technology and engineering teacher, a Neshoba Regional uh, School District employee, and they also had the, the person from Minuteman, great person, but they were almost identical. There was redundancy. And so we did an evaluation about do, why do we need both? And we were able to take those resources from Hale and give more resources to the other schools because they didn't have technology education. It was a weird time in the district. Everybody had different things. So, but the kids all got technology education, which is what it was called at, at the time. So if Brooke and Todd are saying to us, we're taking, there's currently a STEM curriculum, and we're going to have um, a STEM curriculum that's comparable, then looking at the work that has been done here with curriculum, the people that have been hired to improve math and science and reading and the things that have, have transpired over the last few years, I trust that they're going to do that. And I think that, uh, you know, it's, this is where we're in that, part of, of uh, the, the curriculum process. There's, they've got the, the five-year curriculum review that extends to specials, is, or whatever they call it. You know, um, the, I call them specials. It extends to those as well. So I think it's, I think we're crossing a line if we're going to dictate curriculum I'm not a, asking to dictate. Well, this is what uh, that I'm misinterpreting. No, what you're asking saying. to evaluate, right? So I'm, 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 I'm just, I just want to know what the change is going to be before I vote on something. I just want to know. Well, what do you know what the change, change is going to be? You're replacing the resource that that teaches it. It's like, and again, I don't, I, I don't want this to appear like I'm leaning one way or the other. All right, I'm just trying yeah. to play devil's advocate because I do agree that this is getting close to crossing a line. What if, and I, I hate picking on Minuteman, so like, let's pretend, I mean, I'm going to say Minuteman because that's who it is. <coughs> so what if Minuteman decides they're going to tweak their curriculum for next year? Are you going to say to them, okay, let me finish. Are you going to say to them, well, wait a minute, before you implement a new curriculum, the school committee thinks that they need to see it. No. I'm not asking to revisit the curriculum. You want to know that whatever we replace it with I'm, is I'm, at least as good as what they have now. Correct. I'm not suggesting and, that we supply and, input on the curriculum. Right. I, that's not in my. That's not in my wheelhouse. That's so not what I'm suggesting. Given what you know about the work that this school district has done on curriculum, mm -hmm. why would you doubt that they would not make it the same or even better than what is there? I, I, I mean, I see your point. I think, I think that's. that's no, 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 I'm just, I, I, I guess what? that. I think that's unfair. No, I, I'm asking Why? Why is that unfair? Because, because, because there's know. a track I record I mean, of. I get that, but you're, you're putting him on the spot, and that's not right, because he's asking a legitimate question. I know he is, and I, I'm, I'm trying to, to, I don't understand. And it's okay, and we, and we do what? trust you. We do. But it's, it's something that's beloved is going away. And but how do we know it's been loved? Are you what's the evaluation? The teachers, teachers are the, the teachers. It's, are, it's, it's, it's just it's what it's called, all right. And I just want to make sure that the the program that's there and what it's doing is replicated, because once okay, 
So let me do Steve and then you, because Steve's been okay, waiting. A couple, couple of things. Number one, I think my mind is telling me an allegory is like when you have a power drill with a battery pack. What we're doing is we're taking one battery right. pack away and we're putting another battery pack in. That's, that's the transition mm -hmm. thing, number one. Number two, what we're doing is we're taking these programs and like we had a culture uh, committee before and climate committee before, we're bringing this particular program into the Neshoba culture and climate if we do this, okay? And what we're doing is we're creating a situation, we're, we're, cre we're eliminating a situation where we've got a program going on, as good as it is, beloved as it is, we're maintaining the program, we're just changing who's teaching it and who the reporting authorities are. That's really what we're doing. We're not changing the program. And I believe it was said that at this point in time, STEM programs are being STEM curriculums and there are new standards coming down from just the STEM came, curriculums. Just came out. Okay, so in, from my point of view, what we're doing is we're taking a, a beloved program, to use your, your terminology, Lynn, a beloved program, a, a, a well-respected program, a program that has been there for almost time immemorial at this point, and what we're doing is we're enhancing it by bringing it into the Neshoba fold. I, I mean, this is, from my point of view, this is, this is what we're doing. Changing one battery back <coughs> to another. Keeping the drill the same. Uh, Moving away from girls. Yeah, um, I mean, actually, a, a lot of what I was going to say is sort of echoed by Steve, not the drill and battery part, um, but the the parts about, you know, I think if there's there's one through line that I've heard throughout my two years on school committee, it's, you know, bringing everything in the district into alignment, ensuring that, you know, there's this consistent experience both across all the towns, but through all the way through K to 12, and really trying to develop a district-wide vision that everybody shares. And I think, you know, to get at what Steve was saying, it's not that there's anything wrong with the program. I can certainly see the argument for saying that we want to build our own internal capacity and have this be a part of our larger culture, that every teacher is doing the same PD. They're all doing the same sort of work together. And that becomes part of our vision instead of, you know, sort of something that lives separately within the larger district. And I think to get to, um, you know, what Mike was saying, I think given that there was some panic in the communities right. when they thought today this is going to go away, I think that's probably, I don't want to speak for you, but what you were trying to get at is that we you want to make sure that there's assurance to the community members that were worried about this, that this does not mean that the program is disappearing or that it's going to change drastically and be completely different than it, what people... Or that the relationship with... Or that the relationship will be destroyed. Um, no, I, I see all of that. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I appreciate that. I, I see all of that. I, I guess I want to understand what the inf the inflammation is from your perspective. And I inappropriate of me to do this. I am breaking every single rule. I admit it, but I only have two meetings left, so hang me for it. I I but I want you to be really like let's like try to keep us on the same kind of topic. Why are you so upset? Like I read your post because many people sent it to me, and I what I'm what I read there and what I heard here aren't all jiving. So there's some misunderstanding somewhere. I don't understand why you're upset. Well, so part of it is the agenda that's put forth was not descriptive in any way, shape, or form about the context of the discussion, and so there's. There was an understanding of a, of a perceived vote that was going to be asked to terminate a, an agreement that has been long standing since 91. Now, again, previous administrations have worked fine with things, and, and just recently I met with the, um, the advisory board, and, and they asked 
specific questions. Now, but, but you're not you're not answering my question with all due respect. Okay. Please understand, I'm being totally respectful. I'm not. I'm kind of understood. Tell it like it is, girl, and there's no disrespect intended. But my question is, why are you so upset about this situation? The, the agenda, none of us knew. I mean, we knew. I read it. And I was like, oh, we're going to talk about Minuteman school positions. Okay. I mean, we don't necessarily indicate so, on agendas. Well, you don't. Well, you know, every single thing we're doing. But I need to understand from you, why are you so upset? Because there was an email that was sent from superintendent. Uh, which one? Ours? Both superintendents. So, so. Uh, Superintendent Clenchy sent an email this morning to Superintendent Bequellen, yeah. who then notified us via telephone that he had received this, this email yeah. that indicated that there was going to be a request to terminate the agreement forthcoming this week or within a couple of days. Okay. There's no context in that email as to why or, or as to what was the precipitate uh, element. So, again, I have students who have come through this program, have greatly benefited within the community. I know from meeting with the kids and, and, and having them go to both Neshoba and to Minuteman, how much it's loved. I also know, having worked with uh, Ms. Malahi on several projects, that the equipment costs and, and the number of things that you're talking about budgeting that if the program ends, that Minuteman would have to take back would be a considerable impact. So the analysis of, of it's a, a, a cost for cost is not. You also have the teacher's expertise and, and their supporting uh, CTE advisors that are back at Minuteman that you're not going to have within your STEM curriculum here. Okay. So there, there is a number of things, but my biggest concern was that the community at large was not at least prefaced by this. If this has been in the works for over a year, and I searched through all your minutes, there is no mention of it. No, this is the first time it's coming. Uh, correct. So the fact that, that there might be a vote, in my opinion as a citizen of Bolton, is, is unconscionable. You should not be asking a vote for a program or removing a program for the first time that there's a topic without at least finding see, out what the... the see, <coughs> see, so I'm going to interrupt you for a second. I apologize to everyone for doing this, but I think it's really important. We have somebody in the room who has the knowledge, so, okay? She's going to give me hell later. I said that. You said hell? I did. I think <coughs> there's two things I'm hearing from you. One is, if you had conversations with Ed Boquillen prior to sending that email, and that information wasn't trickled down. And I don't know what those conversations were, and I'm not going to get into splitting hairs on it. Was it, hey, we were thinking of this, or was it, hey, we're going to do this? If it was, hey, we're going to do this, I don't know I wasn't there, and that didn't trickle down, then you need to go back to your superintendent and have a chat with him, because I don't necessarily know that, that you own that. That's one. Two, I understand, everyone should understand why you personally are upset this impacts you personally. I don't think anybody is in this room is saying that Minuteman's program isn't worthy. And I also thought I heard you say, and I don't want to put words in your mouth, so if you said something that I heard incorrectly, you tell me, that, the, that are you, wh what is the issue with the equipment? So what, what does oh, that, that look like? I don't think that that's a question is the issue of the equipment. I don't think that it's an issue. It's an additional equipment. expense. Oh, to that component, yes. I mean, and that's something, as I say, anytime you go to make a move like, like we're looking at making, uh, I'm not going to come to the school committee and, by the way, just FYI, I think this is really out of order. I do too, <laughs> then we're going to yeah. wrap it up, but because uh, I've got a whole three towns of people flipping yeah. out right now with wrong information. But the bottom line is the superintendent's role is that when you, by the time you hit your school committee, you have your ducks in order and you know exactly what you're doing. Otherwise, I, I shouldn't be here. So yes, we have been talking about this for a long time and we have been thinking about it such, or I couldn't in good conscience come forward to the school committee with a recommendation I felt I could stand behind. 
So now to the other component, um, in all fairness to Dr. McQuillan, he did, he asked me if I could let him know when we were bringing it forward. That was why the email said, we're bringing it forward tonight. There was no reason, and again, I don't want to justify this on air right. or around this table. From my perspective, there was no reason for anything further because of our earlier discussion, and that's all I'm going to say. And I also, I'm just going to throw this out there to you guys. Respectfully, I do not believe that a decision to make a shift in the resourcing of a program, albeit the program may tweak a little bit, is a community decision. I also don't think that a, a shift in resources is a school committee decision. I think the only reason that you are bringing this forward and now we need to vote on it at some point is because it's in a contract. That's right. If it weren't in a contract, we would not have any involvement in this. That's it would be an OFYI. So like, let's just keep it all in, and thank you for your input. I do appreciate it. Um, and, I, and I also want to be really clear that I, I felt fair, that I've had very good relationships with Dr. Pucolan, so I, I am not in any way, shape, or form wanting to throw him under the bus here for anything. So I want to be really, really clear on that as well, which is why I don't even want to get into the conversation, because that's not fair. But you've said, you've given us what we needed, which yeah. was, where's our previous conversations? Because all I, my concern is, and everyone here in this seat should be concerned, the biggest concern I see is the community uproar that has been created and is starting to swirl. And the, in, and the incorrect, some of the incorrect information that's out there. That's not fair to parents. That's not fair to us. No, that's agree. not fair to you. And that's not fair to you. So let's get the honest truth out there. What is it that we're looking at? We're not looking at blowing up a relationship with Minuteman. We're looking at replacing the resourcing for a program. Does that mean that Minuteman won't have three teachers in our schools? Yeah, maybe it does if it's accepted. That's the change. And the only reason we have anything to say about it is because in 2000 and whatever, a contract was signed. Well, it will have fiscal budget implications next year. I mean, the administrators are calling it a wash, but it's going to show up in our budget as a big jump. So, like, at least a heads up. To the it. taxpayer, it will be negligible. Right. To the district's budget, it will have an impact. But that money is being paid for by the taxpayers. So already right. Already. Right. In assessment. Right. Yeah. It's already there. Yeah. All right. So I, uh, it. So it sounds like it sounds like what we're actually looking at. I would call it recommendation one A and what recommendation one B, because the nuts and bolts resourcing staffing where the money's coming from does seem like a behind the scenes changes that for the most part a student wouldn't know. If, if no one ever said anything, it just happened, it would be invisible for the most part. Is that correct? That's, that's how I see so it. So we could, if, if you wanted to, we could maintain the exact same program and no, nobody would really notice a difference because it's contracts, it's PD, it's staffing. Um, do we have the lab space and the equipment to... Well, it's, it's happening in our school, so, so, right. it's already, so it's already going on. Right, so okay, so then any enhancements to the curriculum, to the programming, social emotional additions or anything are kind of just the regular course of business moving curriculum. forward mm -hmm. of updates and cycle reviews and things like that. So I feel like it's getting all tangled up right now. It's like, oh, we're doing this all at once and we're doing them for one reason that's somehow tied to each other. But in my opinion, these are like two separate things right now. I'm not following. Two separate things in terms of what? The staffing, like this, we want to change the staffing, or the administration is proposing we change the staffing for very specific reasons that she went into. Mm -hmm. But the, the program sort of the same. putting the show of stamp on it and enhancements to the program, mm -hmm. kind of a separate issue. Well, like but that's not an issue, is it? What, why would it be an issue that? No, and I, that, that's what I was hearing from other people. Oh, so that sort of from all tangled Mike. up and yeah, tangled up and together. Like we had, to, we would have to do both. Oh, and that's not. I think yeah. no, I read it more as a rationale, like this is part of the reason why that's gone into your thinking is to put the stamp on it. Mm -hmm. Like it I mean, and like Lorraine said, I think if there weren't a contract this would have nothing to do with us anyway. Right. right. But having that background knowledge for me at least, even though, you know, it has nothing to do with me, um, <laughs> what you do with curriculum 
is like, oh, okay, there's been a lot of thought put into this, you know, here's why. Um, but I, I think that's what you're getting at. Right? It's really not an us thing, that second piece. It's not. Yeah, it's all coming coming forward at the same time. But, it's, it's so, but if, if people on the school committee wanted to look at the curriculum, where does it reside? Where is the curriculum that we could look at? For see, hope, which curriculum? The the um, Minute the, the Minuteman curriculum that is being see, taught in the schools. But there there's a perfect example. Right. right. I I don't know. So we don't have a written curriculum. Well, no, I'm assuming that we do, but uh, but that's why I'm saying that the Neshoba Regional School District doesn't have control necessarily over that. Curriculum. We don't even have a copy of it. Well, we probably can get a well, copy. We might, but then again, why saying, are we getting into analyzing curriculum? No, no, but, not analyzing it. If people don't know, we talk. We're throwing around words like STEM to engineering, all this stuff. But the nuts and bolts of it is, and the kids love it, and this, that, and the other thing. What does it look like? What are they learning? Because if there's concern that we would deviate from it, it would be a blueprint for moving forward. No, if uh, you had it. But that's exactly what. But that's exactly that's what we're point. saying. Yeah. All right. So let's let's. I think everyone's had a chat, a chance to chat. Some of us more than others. Um, what do you want to do? The bottom line is you're looking for us to approve a change in the contract. Not even a change, I'm asking you to terminate the that component that we, the, of the contract. The, just that one thing, just the middle school teacher component. Okay, so. And is there a hard, I mean, I know there's a, it's a G line, but. Yeah. If you want to, to defer this to next meeting. Can I make a suggestion? Yeah, yeah. yeah. If you, yeah. you, you want to defer this to next meeting, we can do that, but honestly, again, with all due respect, this is not a community decision. Yeah. It, it's not, it's not even, I mean, again, the only reason we're here is because it's a contract. So, is that where you were going? Um, not really. But okay, where were um, you going? Just What's the fact that if there is misinformation out there, and this appears to have uh, come out of nowhere for folks, but the reality of the situation was that the people who should have been talking about it, the two superintendents, that this, these things have transpired. Do we want to put some information together that is the, the, the timeline of what happened to clarify things? I don't know that you want, I, just, I, I, I don't want, I, you know, I also don't know that we want to create more of a swirl than is already maybe out there. And I would say that if somebody has concerns, I mean, Anne's going to write this up. I'm sure Jan and Ken are going to write it up. Um, I'm sure people will watch this portion of the meeting. Um, and if they have specific questions about the proposal to call the superintendent or to call their their principal Principals. first call the principal first because I'm assuming you've talked to them about it yeah I mean because like hello um, and they're all in the room and so call all, your principal they're all here tonight because of this um, so. and and if people want to contact the school committee members you can feel free to do that but there it, this is not going to be a political I want to say something, but it's so inappropriate. This is not going to be a political mess. Like, let's just like it, it does not need to be an emotional political swirl. There are plenty of things to get swirly about, but not this. So, if people want to contact the school committee reps and ask questions, feel free to. But I personally am not taking on this one with nasty comments. So, there you have it. And I assume this slide deck is going to be up. Because um, I think that that's important more than anything. It lays it right. all out. Here's why, and I think that's the perfect thing to send to parents if they have questions. Mm -hmm. And keep it in perspective. It's a right. contract issue. This is this is why. This is the background, and then you can also watch the meeting. Here. And, and with, I with think that. one of the strange things, and again, this is why I say there's so many of these little pieces that are awkward. You know, talking to our lawyers about it, for example, it's personnel, so it shouldn't be coming to this table and to Lorraine's point she's right, absolutely right the only reason it's here is because there's a contract in play but personnel should not be coming to this table it's a, it's a, it, it just puts us in an awkward place on many many levels so are we good with moving this off I'm comfortable voting on it I'm right now I'm comfortable voting on it now uh, well Okay, then I, if you are, then you can make a motion and see where it goes. I move. I move that we uh, we agree with Superintendent 
take the recommendation. Determinate. Determine. There it is. Yes, that would be the motion. I, I, move, I move that the NRSB school committee authorizes the superintendent of schools to notify the Manhattan Regional Vocational School District that we wish to terminate the current contract and give notice one year is provided for in the current contract for the middle school positions. I'll second. Okay. Well, before we go to vote, it's your chance to I, have more conversation. I, I, I would rather wait until the next week or the next meeting just to let people have their say or whatever so they don't think it was shoved down their throat and then just get them with it. I think they need time. Only because of what's happened previous to what's happened here. I mean, it just, it'll save a lot of <coughs> awful hands. Move the vote. Well, does anybody else have anything to add? I would appreciate the time just to educate myself more on what I'm voting on. That's all. Okay. All right. Well, then, given that, all those in favor? All those opposed? Yeah, we could still bring the vote back up again. I mean, it's even. Or are you still staying? That's okay. Well, yeah. it's still. Whoever, going. you can bring it up again. We just have to have somebody who votes affirmative bring it up. So the, these three are the only ones that can bring it up and stuff. Mm -hmm. we have three I've four. asked for we all those opposed. Well, abstaining and opposing are the same thing. No, they're not. No, they're no, not. They're are, not. You abs are you opposing? No, no, no. I'll just and abstain. You can abstain. Four abstentions. Yeah. That, okay, so the motion doesn't pass. It'll come up at the next meeting. And I will say again. The school committee members. We need to remember what our role is. Okay. All right. Old business. We don't have any business manager report. March results of the operations report. Operations. Um, and I want to know if anybody has any questions, had a chance to look at it. Seems to be heading down the same, same path. pathway that yeah. was last it's, time. It's, so. it's, it's, we're, yeah, we're going towards the end of the year. Yeah. Yeah, we're getting to the end of the year. Any questions? You have enough money to finish the year. I think so. Are you gonna have, how much are you going to have over? Left over. Right now, that's kind of what it looks like. I know, but I don't yeah. believe that. I, I saw that earlier, and I'm like, there's no way. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's still there's stuff that's no going to happen. We all know that. Yeah, so. well, this is how it looks right now. Keep your fingers crossed. And also, um, if there aren't any other questions, I'd like to bring the treasurer's report up. And that again, uh, there hasn't been much change. Next month, we'll probably see the deposit <coughs> on the assessments and any the questions end. for Pat on the treasurer's report. Well, as long as we have money to finish, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you. Oh, we're good. You're um, yeah, thanks, Pat. Any correspondence to share? No. Um, consent agenda, assuming um, there aren't any changes, we'll consider the meeting minutes of April 10, 2019. Meeting minutes of April 19, 2019. Warrants of April 26, 2019 approved. Items for next agenda. Agenda. Items for next, and I left my schedule in the so printer. Here, here go, here go. Thank you. Oh, such a good one. Um, so the superintendent's evaluation will be next yeah. week. Yeah. Um, 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 Next the uh, meet, the uh, Minuteman Middle School positions vote. Minute? If we can make sure that word is on the agenda. Um, 
And let's see, what else do we have? School choice. No. School no. choice. Why would we do school choice? Yeah. No, it's that, was a, uh, that was a topic, I think, at We did it in October. Yeah. yeah. No, it's not. Uh, wasn't, well, didn't you ask for who's coming in versus who's going out? Or it's not a recap of that? Yeah. Oh, it's a report yeah. out on. I think that's what all it was. Yeah. 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 So, and that's like a two minute um, yeah. discussion. That won't be very long. Um, S3 Academy update. That's Todd's. Mm -hmm. That's Todd. No, that's. Dr. McGuire. Yes. Uh, Dr. Cox. <laughs> that's, that's better. Um, security grant update and the current DIP review. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, Lisa's coming in next uh, meeting as well. Yeah, uh, she's got some exciting news that she's going to share. And so we're going to uh, take a look at that. And what else? Do we have something else? The district improvement plan, we're going to have to go after the district improvement plan at some point in time. Um, I think we were looking at doing an update. We're going to do a kind of a year closeout for you folks to let you know uh, about the accomplishments and how, you know, what we well, met in terms of the district improvement plan because it's a one-year plan and then what we'll be doing is bringing forth the new one, which will be a two-year district improvement plan. In June? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. That makes perfect sense. Do we, we do have all the handbooks, the school handbooks? School all we have to do is high school. school. The high school. Yeah, high school. yeah, you're good. Um, we're hoping to have the results of the CPAC parent survey for the June 15th. Mm -hmm. That's goodness. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, other than that, Kathy, will you move us into executive session? Yes. <coughs> I move that we enter into executive session pursuant to Mass General Law, Chapter 30A, uh, Section 21A, 7 to comply with or to act under the authority of any general or special law or federal grant and aid requirements, review of executive session minutes of 5-9-18, 5-23-18, there were two for that one, 6-6-18, 10-10-18, 11-14-18, 18, there are two for that as well, 1-16-19 and 2-27-19, there are two for that one, in accordance with Open Meeting Law, NGL, Chapter 30A, Committee will adjourn in executive session. Second, please. Second. And ready, roll call. Yes. Yes. All right, Elaine, 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 Steve, Lorraine, yes, Kathy, yes, yes. Lynn, Elise, yes. and Mike. All right, thank, thank you. you.